everybody. Um, maybe good evening uh, some, for, for some of you. I don't know where you are at the Earth, but mainly in the Netherlands, I suppose. Um, as Thijs already introduced, uh, my career is, um, is, is painted by innovation, by, by product development. I started in the, in the industry as uh, I erected some departments of R&D in several companies. Uh, Rockwell later on uh, DSM, a chemical, chemical company in the south of the Netherlands. Um, later on, I started the advisory uh, company for myself, uh, helping industrial uh, uh, companies to, to, to develop their products. Uh, and from 2003 on, I was a professor at the University of Eindhoven. And as Thijs already said, I retired uh, almost five years ago, but I'm still up and running because I'm, what, I'm, what I'm doing right now is, a, among other things, is a, a erecting a, a large living lab in Eindhoven. And I will come back with that to you as well, because also there we are going to do several experiments with support and infill uh, as it is, uh, uh, as it is uh, well, a part of open bower and everything that happened in the late 60s, 70s already. Um, I will tell you something more about a vision that I have on the on industrial and circular building, which is called Slim Bauer. I'm uh, also a chairman of the foundation with the very same name. Um, and um, I will explain that because, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the topic is infill, but you cannot talk about an industrial infill without seeing this area in the context of a, of a complete uh, system. And with uh, Slim Bauer, I have a certain vision developed, which is, by the way, completely in line with what happened already in the 70s and 80s with uh, uh, with uh, the, the heritage of uh, Professor Haberake and Professor Van Rande. Um, uh, so um, I, will, uh, I will explain something about that uh, view, but of course, Slimbao is an answer to something which is happening in the world. And um, therefore we start with uh, what, what, what are really the problems we have to face in the next future. So bang, I would say. <laughs> um, the, the, the question is, are we heading for a disaster or are we able to, uh, to avoid uh, the disaster? And especially if you look to the construction industry, there are several topics that are, well, something new, new uh, um, challenges for the next future to, uh, to conquer. Um, it's about waste of energy. Of course, this, the construction industry is not the only polluter in the world, but um, well, at the end, a, 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 quite a large one. And we waste a lot of energy, especially in buildings and especially in the older buildings. Um, it, it is related, uh, the, the use of energy, especially fossil energy is related to the carbon emission. And in total, uh, the construction industry contributes, is responsible for 43% of the energy uh, use, including the use of buildings. Uh, that's quite the number, I would say. And the, that, that's the bad news. The good news is that we have something, uh, that we have a challenge where we can really be impactful. Uh, we have a large material consumption, over 1,500 kilos per square meter if, if you look at the floor surfaces of buildings, it's quite quite a lot of, uh, of material. Um, of course, by all this material, we have a lot of transportation uh, and this contributes to the nitrogen uh, emission and discussion we have. Uh, building activities are really frustrated already the last two, three years by this nitrogen uh, emission. Um, we use, we, have, we generate actually a lot of waste material, um, especially in demolishing buildings, but also already uh, in new building, uh, building sites, on building sites. 
uh, we have health problems in buildings. Eh? People are 85% or something like that uh, inside buildings. And well, the conclusion out of several uh, researchers is that those buildings are not quite healthy. So we have to do something about that as well. Uh, we, de we developed during the, the last centuries a building technology which is hardly adaptable, uh, not easy adaptable at least, and that is uh, a problem because the, the market is quite dynamic and uh, the, the, what people need, uh, organizations need in buildings is that they are quite uh, flexible because organizations are changing, the market is changing, and then it is, of course, important that buildings can, uh, yeah, that, that they are agile, that they can follow the dynamic world. And you can see that in the fact that we have vacancies in buildings at, and at the same time we have shortages. Yeah? And it depends, of course, on the place where they are. Yeah? It's real, real estate in Dutch, fast food, which means uh, that it is connected to the earth and it is hardly hardly changeable, hardly uh, flexible, um, but that's, uh, that's a fact. Uh, we have to, uh, to deal with the safety and security problems. Fire safety, for example, every maybe we all remember the big fire in London, 2017, I think it was, um, uh, the, the, the Grenfell Tower. But of course, all other uh, other topics in the in the field of safety and security, terror, we have to deal with floods, earthquakes, etc. Uh, we have to deal with the cost of failure. The good news is that it, uh, it was that has been reduced. Uh, about 2010, it was around 11, 12 percent of the turnover of a, of a contractor, which was uh, the cost of failure. So 11, 12 percent of the total turnover was wasted, uh, wasted money, so to say. Uh, it uh, decreased uh, uh, somewhat up to five, eight percent right now. Um, this, has, uh, this is because of the crisis. Uh, everything should be more efficiently and things like that in order to, uh, well, for contractors to, uh, to, to get uh, uh, commissions, to get work to do. Uh, but um, still, five to eight percent is is a large number because if you compare that with the automotive industry, for example, well, it is something far below one one percent. So there's still a challenge uh, for us as a construction industry to um, to improve this number. We are not very efficient. We uh, we have a low productivity. Um, this is, of course, related also to the fact that we have a rather high cost. And uh, at the same time, well, especially also in crisis situations, you always see that a lot of people are going to do something else. So a lot of people from 2010 uh, uh, workers in the construction industry, they are now, um, uh, they are now uh, uh, working in, an, in, another, in another sector. And especially, Thijs mentioned that already, since we have to, to build uh, 100,000 dwellings each year, uh, 1 million in the next decade, uh, we, we, we strongly need those people in order to be able to fulfill the, the challenge we have on this point. And, um, well, the, the, the answer might be that we, we will go to a more industrialized way of building. That's what Slimbauer is also about. Well, the especially in uh, in an era where everything is changing, um, it is always the question: What is the best path to paradise? Eh? The, the the green, the, the the field on the other side of the mountains is probably more green than on this side. But which path should we take? And I think we have to explore that uh, in uh, in the next future, in the next time. Uh, the next period. Um, and the answer uh, to a lot of problems also related to infill is in the, in the services. And uh, these pictures clearly show that, um, well, buildings are 
uh, in a way flexible, but not uh, as easy as it seems maybe. And these pictures show that uh, we are really are getting into trouble because if you're doing it like this, uh, well, at a certain point, you, you really don't know anymore which duct or which wire is meant for which function. And then the, at the end, uh, well, demolishing then is, uh, is very close. The pictures underneath, by the way, are from our parliament building in the Netherlands. Um, and the upper ones, I should be honest about that, they are foreign uh, pictures. They are taken in Spain. And so if you, after, let's say, 50, 60, 70 years, uh, you need you have, you have a new, de new destination for your building, uh, and, uh, a dwelling that should be an hotel or something like that, you have to, uh, to do things like, like, like this, as is shown here. Uh, the tree was already uh, uh, in, the, in the first picture. Um, I see the, the tree as a kind of symbol for actually two things. The first one is a, that it is a metaphor for the services structure in the buildings. I know that a lot of architecture students are not very interested in services at all. Uh, the, it's about shape and form and, uh, but at, and, and you, don't, you don't need to, to be a specialist. Uh, you, do, you, you should not be able, uh, it's, it's of course, uh, possible if you want, but it is not necessary that you're able to to calculate what will be the dimension of a of a of a sewer pipe or uh, uh, an air duct. That is not necessary. We are specialists for that. But you should realize that a building cannot operate without services, and they have to be somewhere. So they are they they enter the building at a certain place, and uh, and they will be distributed all. Through the building, and you should have somewhere you should have an image uh, how this uh, will be done in a technical way. Uh, and uh, the, the, the picture here is uh, under one the surface structure is uh, uh, what we call in the Netherlands a cable boom. I don't think cable three is a good translation, but um, in, the, in the automotive industry, in the car industry, it is usual like that, that in step 52, uh, a product like this uh, will uh, come aside the production line. And then in 5.2 minutes, it will be installed in the, in the car. It's completely prepared. It's prefabricated, so to say, and it will be installed. And in the, in build, in the traditional building, it's not like that. We, uh, the installation is probably installed uh, within, let's say, 20 or 30 steps. The installer is already there in the, during the foundation phase and also in the finishing phase, he's still there or better even, he's again there. Um, the tree is also, also a symbol for the, the way uh, of how we could organize uh, the, um, the, the building chain, the supply chain. And the picture is quite uh, small, and I show that in the next one, which is really the heart of what I, uh, how I can explain the Slim Bauer process. Um, it is uh, designed as a four-step process. Uh, the four, uh, you can see my mouse as well, my pointer, yeah. And so there's, there's four main steps in this, in this process, the structure, uh, the next one is the envelope, then the services, and at, at the end, the, the finishing, or in terms of, uh, of Stuart Brand, uh, the space plan. Uh, and uh, the challenge is, uh, in, uh, if, if you try to, uh, to go into an industrial way of building, and also uh, an adaptable building, then it is very important that the, uh, the services have a special place in the process. Actually, you should create a, um, a step in the building process where the services can be installed in one step. And that needs a little building technology in order to make that, uh, to make that work. And so pretty much um, flexibility in industrial building is about separation of services. Um, if, I would, if, if somebody would ask me, what, what's the secret? I would say that's the secret. You should, you should separate them. In, in the process, uh, in the meaning of a process way. And that makes it possible to, uh, to create an, an, uh, 
a sequential process uh, where the, with maybe four uh, subcontractors. Uh, some of the projects I will show you a couple of them in the next slides. Uh, some of the projects even there was no main contractor, so the the buildings were built with subcontractors, and they uh, independently can prepare. Uh, the, the things they have to do on the building site uh, at home. Yeah? They can prepare it, prefabrication, so to say. And that is possible because of the cut of these four steps, uh, which will be uh, carried out in, uh, in a sequential way. So it's first the structure, then the envelope, then the services, then the finishing. And the, uh, one of the advantages of a process like this is that if you also point the companies who will go who will carry out the the, uh, the process then you are able to to use their uh, knowledge yeah? the, 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 mostly the, the, uh, those companies are very skilled and have a lot of knowledge and you can already invite them in the in the during the uh, design process um, and you can invite them at the design table so to say so also in the preparation this knowledge can be uh, put in, into the process, in the design process. And at the end, when the building is in use uh, and you want to change something, uh, it is the process is the other way around. It's a reverse process. So you, in most of the cases, you start by rearranging your space plan. And in order to be able to do that, you need to also make some changes in your services. Every change of a building has something to do with the services and maybe this would happen maybe every five years or 10 years, not the, the building as a whole, but some particular places in the building, for example, and maybe every 40 years or 30 years, uh, you will you need to, uh, to replace your facade, for example, and so on. And what we hope of course, is that the structure will remain for maybe 100 or 200 years. So there's also a, a logical order in the, in the scheme. I, uh, this is a little bit uh, extended way of explaining Slim Bauer, but it's important that you uh, can understand what actually is the essentials of, of Slim Bauer. And in traditional uh, open Bauer, uh, if I project that on open Bauer, then you, infill would be probably install and uh, finishing Maybe also a little bit of the shell of the envelope, uh, especially if I look to the outside uh, uh, sidings, for example, that can also be part of the, well, infill, outfill, you probably would say maybe. Some quick examples. Uh, I developed this, uh, this vision around 2003 and ever since uh, quite some buildings, I think around 150, Buildings in the Netherlands have been erected with uh, based on this vision. Some of them uh, discovered that uh, during the design process, another one later on in the process, also buildings were really starting from from Slim Bauer starting point. And what you can clearly see is that uh, you see some floor systems where um, uh, ducts and wires can be. Uh, can be installed, um, and uh, an, also, an also characteristic is that floors and and, and walls they have uh, um, they, they they all have some some well uh, the floor some suspended floor for example where you can remove panels in order to get to that to have access to your uh, devices also later on. This one, especially uh, it's the Vanco campus in Eerstel in the left, and uh, this building was built uh, very efficiently with, uh, and actually it was done uh, around 30% uh, below budget. So and, uh, um, Slimbauer helped this, uh, this project very much in, uh, in do it in an industrial way. Uh, some uh, a school in, uh, in Voorburg and uh, also on the, on the right building in um, in uh, a building in Arnhem. Uh, the technology is um, is not that it's the saying you should do it in this way or or, or another. Uh, 
the secret, as I said, is the, the separation of services. And the way you are doing that is technology that is, that meanwhile, has been developed, but uh, already is under development in several sectors. In the concrete sector, I developed this, uh, this uh, product myself, but the other ones are all uh, developed later on uh, by the market. Um, well, not to say so much about this. Uh, some examples under development. Uh, there is a, a company called MPC Parking. They build parkings, as uh, the name already suggests. Um, but the idea was this is, by, by the way, an aluminum uh, structure, uh, beams, columns, but also floor, hollow core floor systems. They are um, they are all uh, aluminum from aluminum, made from aluminum. And in, in, uh, in related to sustainability, maybe aluminum is not, has not a big reputation because you need a lot of energy to get this material available uh, in the application. But uh, another aspect of aluminum is that it is uh, that it has that you can produce with very low tolerances, and that means that prefabrication is easily to uh, to achieve. And also uh, the demount, the mounting uh, of, of these elements is, is quite easy to organize. And uh, you can show that you can, these, these carriages, if you, if you build them, they might be a little bit too large. So you can reduce them. You can expand them if necessary. You can, uh, you can, you can do a lot of things, but you need also a central storage in order to be able to service all these several places where the building is uh, erected in order to be able to expand it or to reduce it. But you can also transform it. And um, this the idea is that you will not uh, demount the garage, but give it another function because you can, this aluminum structure, you can also consider, consider as a, uh, as a um, well, as a first step of the Slimbauer process, uh, the structure of the Slimbauer process, and then with an infill uh, uh, solution, a box in box uh, solution, you are able to yeah you know, to realize other functions like dwelling, schools, offices, and shops, etc. It can be done with a lot of uh, technology uh, underneath. Uh, the, from the right, there's a product of Saint-Gobain, uh, which is called uh, um, um, Cable Stud, because it is easily to uh, to distribute uh, services into uh, into the into the separation wall. Uh, the, in the middle is a very famous one, which is quite old in the open uh, building uh, uh, area. Um, it's um, a structure with uh, polystyrene elements where you can put in services and later on you can cover it with a panel, uh, for example, which is also in the left panel uh, the case, which are uh, um, polymer table structures. Underneath uh, these uh, tables, you can hide services and on top of it, you can maybe install panels and even uh, it would be finished with a screed which is not accessible for services, but for some applications, you don't need to be at your services every every five years, or that could also be a solution. Uh, this is uh, the, 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 uh, the infill system that I showed in the previous slide, is shown here in a, a renovation project. About 15 years ago, this uh, was already used. And the, 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 this also, as I said, it's a box and box system, but it is not installed as a box. It is, uh, it is mounted uh, at the end. Of the, it's a box, but it exists of ceiling panels, wall panels, and floor solutions. And um, in underneath here, here you see a row of seven, of five, uh, no, uh, seven houses, original seven, well, small houses which were rearranged uh, to four new houses. And the, the, the colors, uh, they show that here two uh, houses were combined together and to, into one new other house. And here on the right, you see three houses that, that were uh, adapted to, uh, to two houses. 
And that's possible because of this box in box approach. Here, the house, which is also on the, on the back of, uh, of uh, where I'm sitting now. Uh, this is a project that I, uh, that I generated in, uh, well, maybe 2010 or so. It was finished 2014 because of the crisis. Um, uh, it is an energy neutral house, which was in 2010 uh, quite new. And that was one of the things that I wanted to show that it was possible. It, it, it's, it's, by the way, my, it was my own house because I moved. We we'll show that later on. And important here is uh, then in this area, you see a solution for uh, the separation of services into the system. So it was built up out of panels. And here is a zone. In fact, uh, it is drawn here as a zone of uh, 0.6 meter width. But in practice, it was carried out uh, twice as large. So 1.2 meters. Uh, um, uh, width of the of this uh, uh, of this zone, and this picture you see uh, maybe may slightly a difference in floor finishing. And uh, so uh, all through the to the house, this this uh, gutter, so to say, is accessible for for services. I build a new one. Uh, meanwhile, I'm I'm living here already. Um, but it is done, the other one was in steel structure. This was uh, done in uh, timber frame. Um, and here uh, you see something about uh, the approach uh, with, uh, with the services. So everywhere is, is a possibility to, uh, to, uh, to install services into, into the house. And in fact, looking to the slim bower process, uh, we, in this case, we combined the structure and the shell the, the envelope together in one step. And then uh, there was a space in, in the organization for installations and we finished with uh, the finishing. Uh, here are uh, some pictures from the, uh, the first step of the building. Yeah, this was the, the, the structure which was built up in, uh, in three days. It was prepared of course uh, in the factory it took a little longer time, but on site it was only three days. And here you, you get some impressions that the services are hidden behind suspended ceilings, front panels uh, against the wall, and also in the floor, we had a solution for uh, a similar solution for services. Let's look uh, like this right now. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, you can hardly imagine that we were in the snow, but it's I think three weeks ago, uh, we, we actually were. Then uh, I end up with uh, the laboratory, as I already said. I'm starting up uh, uh, in, uh, a living lab in Eindhoven. It's called LL040, which is the, the municipal number, telephone number. Uh, and we go, what we're going to discover there over the next 15 years is uh, the compact living in the city. And it's touching really every topic you can think of. Uh, so on one hand, it's an R&D, a place where we are going to explore R&D. And at the same time, it is also the, the idea that people can uh, uh, living there at a quite high uh, standard of living. Um, well, it is, it is an impression which will probably not uh, the reality because we are developing it right now with a lot of uh, uh, companies. And the idea is that what we discover in this, uh, in this lab that we will able to project that onto the city because Eindhoven is, is also fast growing like many cities. And uh, well, at the same time, the surface of the, the area of the city is not growing at all. So. We need, uh, we need, the city has to expand, I think, with about 30% of inhabitants in the next decade. And no, well, it's a big worry. How are we going to house all these people in a proper way? Uh, the area of the, the living lab is, uh, is like, uh, it, is, it is showed in the picture. It exists of two spaces, uh, the, the, what we call the, the neighborhood space in Dutch, the Buurtkamer. 
uh, where, um, well, let's say uh, the objects will be realized in uh, max, uh, max uh, three floors uh, levels, three levels of building. And we have a city space because the city is not only the, the, uh, the outside uh, districts, but also the inner city, of course. So we also are going to experiment with uh, a number of stories. In this location, it was possible to go to six stories. Uh, in total, it will be 120 uh, dwellings, which will be built in clusters because we have several companies who want, who like to exercise in this area. Some of them with one, only one dwelling, others with uh, three, some, some of them uh, five uh, dwellings. And, and, and this way we will fill up this, uh, this area within the next few years with uh, objects where we are not going just to build them, but we are also going to do all kinds of exercises with demounting them, replace them, uh, move them maybe in the area as well. We have some clusters that start in the, in the neighborhood space and will end up in the, in the, in the, in the city space. Uh, well, there, there, are, there are five uh, pillars, um, but actually they are covering everything that is, uh, uh, that is important for the future. Huh? And that's, that's the reason why I, on top of this picture, I put all these keywords that are touching really everything which is important right now. I mentioned this because we are going to do a lot of exercises also with the way of industrial building based on Slim Bauer, which implies uh, to find solutions for, uh, for structures, but also to find solutions for infill, uh, infill uh, uh, challenges. And the idea is that we are doing this with companies, but also it's in this slide, by the way, we, have, we, have, we already have a lot of companies. But it is, uh, it's Eindhoven, it's, it's quite logical that also the University of Eindhoven is, uh, is already uh, in, in the house, but uh, it, it is also an open invitation to Delft because we can use all the knowledge that... Uh, so it is, it's, it's just a place where we are going in the next 15 years to explore and to invent everything that will be needed in order to be able to... Do to build in a more sustainable and efficient way and a circular way, so to say. Uh, the more colors, the logos that are, that are colored are already in, uh, in the house, so, uh, so to speak. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of companies where we are talking with, but I repeat, it's also an invitation. If you are interested as a student, I don't know how to organize, all that because we started only one month ago and we are uh, yet we are still we are organizing everything but keep in mind that it is an, an invitation also to uh, to contribute yo i come to an end of my lecture and uh, as i already uh, as it was prepared there's now time for questions so i give the word back to our president of the meeting <laughs> Thijs, the word is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, fine lecture. Uh, you also with a lot of information and uh, input. Uh, uh, so thanks for doing this. Hey, Timo, uh, uh, fine, you're also here. You're one of our graduates uh, and doing your uh, let's say graduation and now a master Paul. Um, uh, you have a question about uh, what we call Dutch the lighting code, and I think that's an interesting one. Maybe you can ask your question if you want. Um, yeah, I was wondering about the uh, the smart house uh, it was named. Yeah. Uh, oh, the house of tomorrow. Um, yeah, did it already have uh, ducts that were movable on the floor as well, as you showed in different systems? Or did you use a, uh, uh, a other type of uh, duct system in the floors? No. Uh, it is a, a, a floor that in this particular zone, you can remove the, the tiles on top of them. So you get access to a gutter where the services are installed and the services are were prefabricated. Yeah? So the, you, you can, you, but you still are, it's easy to change them. And in fact, it was very functional because uh, in the first year that we lived there, I think the floor was already moved for, removed for uh, well, I mean, four or five times for several reasons. And 
from this uh, central, uh, so the, the, in the house, there's a, in, the, in the center, there is this gutter, so to say. And to the left and to the right, uh, the services were uh, distributed in order to get into uh, um, uh, separation walls and things like that. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, so separation, that's, let's say, the key, uh, I think, also in, 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 in your lecture, uh, as you, yeah. I think, uh, clarified uh, this. And, and, and maybe that's also a good topic to uh, discuss a little bit further. And maybe, Michiel, uh, if you want to uh, uh, add something, uh, please uh, uh, help me in that way. Because, for instance, uh, and Chris is also, uh, Chris Arts is also in this uh, Zoom, so maybe you can also help me in this sense. Um, because we are living in the, in, in the world of circularity issues, and we talk, you're also talking about uh, what I call components, uh, the, 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 the industrialized components that you combine. So uh, there must be separation in a certain way, there must be components, and there must also be modularity. That's also uh, one of the keys, of course, uh, because we have to yeah. scale up this in the industrialized way. So. Yeah. Uh, for example, I think uh, uh, Michiel uh, Susebeek, who's of uh, Saint-Cobain, they are building a dashboard so you can make, uh, uh, let's say, all kinds of uh, solutions integrated also, uh, implemented also with the building services. Maybe he can say something more from this digital approach. And Chris Aert, uh, he graduated also on a modular uh, system, which you can uh, assemble in, in a factory and uh, uh, then you uh, put it on a big truck and uh, bring it to the building place. Eh? Uh, McKinsey uh, several years ago uh, uh, proved that this was, let's say, the most uh, affordable uh, way to, uh, to build and that you don't have any longer a, a huge building place, but you assemble it. Uh, so you see for one million homes, for example, one of the, 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 the holy uh, uh, story is, let's do it modular, then we can do it as fast as possible. So. I'm a little bit wondering uh, who can be in, 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 in the lead in this. Is, is more the digital process uh, in the lead or do we have to assemble it all together and to do it in a modular way, uh, in an enlarged way to make infills, for example, that are ready-made eh, also to put in, in structures. So what, where, what, what are we discussing within five or 10 years? What is the expectation? What is, let's say, the breakthrough <coughs> You're looking for maybe we can have a short discussion about this yeah if Chris, what do you think you're still in a modular way but you have a lot of experience already in yeah. with yeah. so, so, and the implementation of that yeah, so i'm curious in this and how can we enable uh, the mass customization in the systems that you've developed uh, in a digital way so we can apply it for thousands of different houses uh, to figure out a way to scale up this thought <laughs> yeah because yeah yeah well in, in the in the industrial world you, you, I, I always say you see you have uh, two uh, kind of uh, movements mm -hmm. and one is uh, from the technology point of view uh, people always say well let's standardize that uh, repetition is a very important thing in order to come to an industrial way of building but uh, the danger of that is that we are getting a kind of boring architecture eh, where everything is the same and that you get uh, places, that you get uh, spaces where, well, where you cannot recognize where you are really uh, in Amsterdam or Maastricht or Groningen. Uh, they all would be the same, which is sometimes already the case looking to uh, row houses, for example. But... That is a danger of, uh, of the technology approach. Um, on the other hand, and that is what, what Slim Bau is aiming at, that you still are able to design a building in the way you like to design it. But uh, from that, from that uh, uh, starting point on, you are able to cut the, pro the, the product, uh, the, the, the environment into parts, which can be prepared. And of course, the first one is more efficient, I think. But uh, the, the, the big aim is not, of course, only to do everything efficient as possible, because there are also other uh, characteristics of buildings which are very important. And architecture is one of them, I think. Uh, so I think there will always be 
Uh, like uh, also, if you look to the to the cloth uh, industry, uh, 100 years ago, if you needed a suit, you would go to uh, to a clear, a clear marker. What is it in English? A, uh, tailor. A tailor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and now, yeah, of course. And uh, nowadays, well, some people still do. Uh, we have been standardizing everything and. Uh, the variation is is there because there are a lot of uh, suppliers, huh? so you you can choose out of a, a wide range of possibilities, and therefore also the industrial manufactured clothes clothes uh, are uh, still well. It's, it's it's still possible to do that in a very efficient way, but in building, well, um, if you are if you uh, the big the, the largest contractor is maybe producing let's say 3,000, 4,000 houses each year, which is another skill. Uh, so if you're, if you're looking for a solution, uh, industrial solution in the building industry, I think it's, it's differently than it is in other sectors. Mm -hmm. And I think also the other approach is, uh, well, I think it's, uh, it's quite feasible to do it in that way as well. Michiel? Yeah, I, I, I also have a question. Um, I, I made a new slide uh, on, uh, last Monday. I, I, I gave the first presentation. Yeah. But um, um, I think it's also about understanding and managing the complexity and understanding all stakeholder needs. And also, uh, I, I really liked the presentation of Pirouz yesterday with the, the, the why, yeah, the abstract why, then the black box of decision making, and then the concrete solutions. I think all everything is possible, we can go to Mars, uh, so to say, but who is deciding on that? So that's maybe I, 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 I quickly share my screen and then you understand uh, what I mean. It's also something I want to discuss with the students mm -hmm. um, because uh, you have a lot of stakeholders involved uh, by uh, the info industry and also uh, if we are uh, renovating and transforming, uh, to trans uh, 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 trans transforming the current building stock. <coughs> so you have the end users, the nature, I highlighted those who have the least loudest voice in this whole process. And then you have the society yeah, that's, that's uh, from top down, put on. We have to do all this energy and uh, CO2 uh, ambitions and then the municipality grid management they also have uh, input uh, what's the plus minus of the, of the kilowatt hours that the house is using they have the real estate owner of course uh, um, um, a lot of money uh, and things are involved there and they have all those makers uh, the architects the, the 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 contractors and also the building industry and then you have this black box of decision making, and uh, that's uh, also what I showed last Monday with the with the dashboard. I think we have to peel off all the teams that are there and and understand who is making uh, having input on what what team, and uh, uh, and 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 who determines what's the height of it, and then all and then if you go to concrete solutions for the skin, the infill installations, everything is possible. You also showed the. The, the cable stud system of uh, Sangerbent Jiprock. Of course, it's possible. We can we can do all kinds of things to make and um, make it all flexible. But who wants to pay for it? Who has the the, the long term view and also money for that? So that's that's I think the big question, and and that's something I want to show on with this uh, scheme. Yeah. And I, I will, I, I'm interested how you respond to this, sales. Yeah, the the question that arises is who is operating the, the black box, eh? the, the, the 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 panel in the middle. Um, I think uh, we are also rearranging the the supply chain, and um, everyone who who logically could uh, fulfill this role, and it could be different. Uh, I, I, I can easily think about architects who are able to uh, to do this, uh, to fulfill this role. Um, in, in many Slim Bauer projects, you also see that uh, there was not, sometimes it was the architect who was uh, the, the 
de, de regisseur in, in Dutch, de, de director of the, of yeah. the process. Um, uh, sometimes it was a, um, a, a specialized director which was hired for the for the project. But I'm, I agree that um, that that it is um, that it is important that somebody who should be in charge and to 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 uh, to connect everything uh, on top of this picture with uh, at least so it, it, you will be able to land in something uh, which is uh, meant by the picture's downside this uh, this uh, uh, this slide um, and actually I think I think Slim Bauer. Um, makes the process a little bit easier uh, by, by cutting it. But still, I think also everything that has to do with BIM and, and IT, which, which, which could, could be very helpful and, and, and already appear to be helpful also in projects in order to get uh, information on time, in order to, get, uh, to come to the right uh, decisions. And as you mentioned also, um, well, it's it's true that buildings are uh, decisions are made on based on building costs, while a lot of challenges are uh, you you are able to do something more if you are able to look into the future as well. So if you can if you can uh, imply also the operational costs, for example, then you come to other decisions, and in fact, it's quite strange that it's it's because of the of the scattering of the of, of the roles yeah, that everyone is fulfilling his own role in a very efficient way. But if you look to the to the total uh, challenge, then uh, it is important that we also look uh, to buildings in that way. And, and in fact, a building is not about costs. A building is an investment to uh, to facilitate the process for a long time. So if you need to uh, to invest a little bit more in flexible uh, uh, infills, for example, um, in most of the cases you should you should do that. It is a wise decision to do that. But uh, so it is also a matter of how are we going to 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 present the message to the market huh? and. Well, it's not something that you change from one day to another. Uh, it's uh, we, we found the word transition, which already means that it will take a long time. But I'm sure that well, at the end, I would say uh, the intelligence should should win. <laughs> this is wise to do, I think. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Jos, for this. Uh, uh, Caroline, you want to say something? Yes, I was triggered by um, the remark of yours that the decision making is 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 um, uh, something to be uh, when you see the slide of me uh, of Michiel with the with the black box or the dashboard. Um, is it an idea that you uh, like uh, um, Openbauer is a promoting sort of to have this different stages of different elements of Slim Bauer uh, that they have different decision makers. Is that something that is in, in your picture, Jos? That, or do you have one decision maker for the whole project? Or do you also see different decision makers for each step yeah. of no, the I, 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 uh, yeah. process? As I meant it uh, in the discussion, uh, it, it was about the, the project as a whole. Uh, but of course, if you, it's, it's the tree thinking, actually. So if you come down to one of these four uh, uh, elements of Slim Bauer. Also within this sub-project, you can again have a similar process. But uh, the way I meant it was uh, for the project as a whole. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so we need also our management people. Uh, so we really appreciate to, uh, to work in collaboration also with the people who knows uh, about the process. But if I'm looking as a, uh, through the eyes of a student, I would be in charge to make uh, uh, by creative solutions this happen. Uh, so then I show it. Eh? If you see Mark Kohler doing his work, then he uh, uh, adds convincing solutions and uh, involves also uh, adding value by the influence of the user. I think that's also one of the things that Saint Corbin uh, like to reach. Uh, let's say we are doing this not we are doing this for society so 
how <laughs> democratic or how how do you organize, let's say, this process? A former dean, Karen Laglas, uh, uh, addressed on this uh, faculty uh, her uh, her speech uh, with uh, who is in charge here? Who is in charge here? So. If I'm an architect, I will be in charge because I want to make, uh, together with uh, all the uh, stakeholders, uh, the decisions, so I make the best value out of. And then I think the life cycle is another one that's also uh, combined, of course, with the components uh, issue. Is it, uh, is it how do you can also dismount uh, several components uh, in the future, as you also addressed with the Stuart Brand uh, uh, issue? And, and then there is a life cycle, of course. So part of the dashboard is also, I think, the, the timeline of uh, investments that must be done and also taking it back. Uh, we are doing a lot of research also in uh, lease constructions for facades, for instance. Uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, lunch lecture is uh, uh, the Zappi talk and then Tilman Klein, uh, who followed up uh, uh, Mick Eckhart as a professor here, uh, will also talk about, let's say, uh, the, the investments also in money, but also in time and in material use uh, on a longer line, because uh, if you use aluminium, you have to take it back within 30 years because you're, you're still the owner of the aluminium uh, and so on. So these kind of, I think, really difficult but challenging questions are still going on. I, I like to come to, uh, to um, it's, it's around 10 o'clock and I, I think uh, it, I don't see new questions in the chat. Is everybody fine? Uh, the, the lecture of Pirouz Nourian will be online within several days. Uh, Caroline is working really uh, hard on this. We will share this also in the One Million Home Domain of TU Delft. Maybe Saint Cobain also like to share it. And of course, the openbuilding.co uh, uh, site will uh, share it. And also the lecture, uh, uh, so thanks to you, Jos, uh, we will edit it uh, and, and uh, make, uh, let's say, uh, we will first show it to you. So then after that, we will put it online and share it also with uh, friends all over the world. Yeah, and great. We need to work on this. Yeah, things to do. Yeah, a lot of things to do in that sense, but the separation and then after that, the integration, uh, you have to do separation and then to do a collaboration to make yeah. valuable neighborhoods. That's also your last slide uh, with your new initiative that you want to uh, uh, start up in, in Eindhoven. Yeah. There are a lot of ownership then uh, to make a community out of this. So we have to work on, let's say, a uh, valuable neighborhood. If you, if you ask me who is, let's say, in the lead of uh, working on these processes, have a look to Space and Matter. This, uh, this office in, uh, uh, based mainly in Amsterdam is doing, uh, let's say, uh, also uh, innovative architecture, but is also building communities. They first start to build a community. That is also what you showed in your last uh, uh, part of your presentation. And what we are doing, so this is not the end. For us, it's the beginning. We are building a community together with Leo Orschot and, uh, and others uh, in the One Million Home Domain, led by Maria Elsinga, Eindhoven is involved, Radboud Universiteit, St. Corbin is involved. We need each other to work the coming years on, let's say, how do we get this done? Yeah, I think the, the execution process is maybe disintegrated, uh, the separation of services. But I think the thinking should be integral as, as integral as possible. We need every everything around knowledge and the th the thinking is very important, and we should do that together. I think. Yeah, the less pipes we see in the coming years, the better it is. So uh, I really appreciate your uh, beautiful slides in the beginning of all those piping and so on. But the less pipes, the better the the, the house is working. <laughs> you don't need the services. <laughs> If you design, so this is, I think, the added value that we can share with our students, with our building technology specialists and the, the role of the architect to be yeah. such uh, inventive that you implement there. If you see, if you go to Africa and, 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 and they, they need just a little bit of wind to slow down, to, to lower down the temperature for one or two degrees, that helps you to make more comfort. That's also the dashboard about of uh, Saint Cobain. That's what I really appreciate upon, uh, upon their approach, and that I like to share with the students how we can lift up this value. Avoiding services is also a way of separation. <laughs> less is more. Less is more. <laughs> Sorry, I I didn't have time to write you a short letter, so I write you a long letter. It is of course. <laughs> 
the designing is making hours and making hours and throw it away and again yeah. and improve yeah. and improve and then yeah. you have a short letter and that's the short so the simple the better so kiss keep it simple stupid in that sense yeah that's the, yeah sure yeah okay that's right Jos, again, thank you very much. We will see each other also in other uh, committees and so on. So thanks for helping us, uh, guiding uh, this young generation and also all the generations who are still really uh, interested in open building because we still believe this is part of our future. Thanks to all of you're, you. You're very welcome, all of you. And if you have further questions, you, you know how to find me. In the presentation at the end, there's a... Uh, website uh, link so you, you, you will find me there yeah and we will share it also on our uh, social media and so on great great